Everybody, how you doing? Thank you so much for tuning in to Good News. I'm Josh Johnson. I'm here with dates, lots of dates. Gonna be going around the country doing stand up, saying uh, hello to all of you in joke form. I am so thankful to everyone that's come out. We had sold out shows in Seattle, Portland, Vancouver. All those audiences were great. It was wonderful to meet all of you. I do a meet and greet anytime that I can, which is most of the time. Uh, still managed to do the meet and greet in Portland, even though my flight was that night. So I really do it every single chance that I get because I love meeting you. And I very much appreciate you listening, tuning in. Let me know in the chat where y'all are from, where you're tuning in from, and where I should come. Because in March, you know, we're almost there, but in March I'm going to be in Birmingham, Alabama. That's this weekend because March starts very soon. Uh, I'm also going to be in Albany. Grand Rapids is sold out as well as Stanford, Connecticut. But in April, I'm going to be all over the place. We have added a Nashville show. We've added a bunch of shows and... If you go to my site, joshjohnsoncomedy.com, you can buy your tickets or you can join the wait list until tickets are available. So with that out of the way, I want to bring you some good news. Uh, some personal good news for me is that I am still alive. Um, I, I was very tired, so I had to fly in 
from Portland. Like I said before, I did the shows in Portland at Helium Comedy Club, which was absolutely fantastic. And I got to meet a lot of great uh, people that came to the show. And we had a wonderful time. And then I hopped on my flight. And then I slept on the flight. It was a red eye out of Portland into New Newark. And I slept pretty well, better than you think you could sleep on a United flight. Uh, truly like a baby, but like a baby with a with a big body and no neck pillow. And I land and I get into the Uber and I just take the Uber straight to work. And on the way, I do fall asleep because we hit some heavy traffic. And this driver was very smooth. And when I say smooth, I mean he wasn't like stop starty the way some people are that makes you almost like sick to your stomach. He was very much like, ah, there's no room. I'm not going to accelerate yet. And so it was a very smooth ride. So I fell asleep into almost as deep of a sleep as the plane. And when I woke up, uh, he was he was hitting my knee because uh, I don't know how long I had been asleep after he was parked. I don't know how long he was trying to wake me up, but he was very much like, buddy, it's time. I've I've tried to be as polite as I can. Now I'm waking up for the first time, so I have no idea how long he's been trying to wake me up. But uh, he's finally being a little firm with me, and he's like, come on, you you gotta you gotta get out. We we've been here for a while. And so then I opened the door, but I didn't realize I opened the door traffic side. So I open the door and I get ready to get out and just like full on green lights for everybody. And so I immediately slam the door shut, get out the other way. But it could have been terrible because I can't believe my reflexes were that fast. Like I, I was very, very sleepy. Um, and then had a great day at work, had another great day at work, had another great day at work. And then I came here to be with you to deliver you some of the good news. So we're going to start off with a uh, something that I'm going to have to explain for the most part because the, the the video is is fine but the video doesn't quite do it justice and I really want to break down every single thing that happens in the story okay so um, a man stages a gunpoint robbery to propose to his girlfriend in wild video now the whole description of the headline is true all those things did happen now in the video, a guy is, is in the car with his, with his girlfriend, and they, they get stopped in the middle of traffic, not quite in the very middle of the intersection, but at the light, and then two guys jump on, uh, jump in front of the car, and they're, you know, yelling for them to get out and everything. Then uh, two other dudes roll up, in, like, on motorcycles to also be backup, I guess. And then they pull him and they pull her out of the car and then they make them stand at the middle of the intersection. Like we're actually in the intersection now. And then the dudes who have been yelling this entire time, right? They've been screaming since they stopped the car. They've been yelling. They finally stop yelling. They give my man a little bit of space and he drops down on one knee to propose. And miraculously... She says yes, which I'm not going to lie, surprised me. I was, I was shocked because if I may, I have some concerns and suggestions for my man here. Okay, so first of all, if the robbery is fake, if the, if the entire thing that's going to make this thing happen is a ruse, you really don't need a real gun like there was really no need to brandish a real gun in front of this woman since the entire robbery is fake maybe i'm crazy but like let me know what you think because i was like all right but the dude is like he really got that thing on him and i'm like he didn't need to bring it if he knows he's not going to use it uh if anything it just makes the situation more confusing because after the proposal and after all of the clapping and cheering and, and hugging and everything, she will end up asking, like, so are you, like, gang affiliated? Like, are you actually crypt up? Because that's a real gun that he seems to have. Uh, the other thing that that really took me back is, like, if you are in mid-robbery, right, a lot of emotions are going to be running high. OK, so you're mid robbery. You get pulled out of the car. Your man gets pulled out of, out of the car. And then they 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 bring y'all both around the car to face each other. So now you think you're going to be going out cartel style like you think this is Griselda happening in real time right now. Right. And then 
your man gets down on one knee, which I forgot to mention. They made him do. They were like, get down on your knee. And, and then they gave him some space. So now you're like, oh, oh my God, this is going to be worse than I thought it was going to be. And then he proposes. In, in, in the hype of that situation, it is kind of hard to say no. You know what I mean? It's kind of hard to, to be like, nah, I think I'm good. Even though that may be what you're feeling, it's, it's hard to say no when everybody but your man who is holding a different type of rock has a gun on them. And I want to know what she said a week later. You know what I mean? She says yes right now. And she does a little playful hitting and stuff. But I want to know if like a week later after a couple of sleeps, she was like, wait, this was wholly unnecessary. Let me know also in the chat how you're feeling about this as I'm telling it to you, because I want to check in on your thoughts because I have so many on this. But I want to also get to what you have to say about it. Um, yeah, I don't know what I would do. Like, like if I'm being honest, I don't I don't know what I would do if somebody did that to me. If they if they were like, hey, <laughs> the most romantic moment of your life doubles as a story of insurance fraud. Yeah, you know I mean, like like they took the car, they took everything. Also, it's how, you know, your mother and I decided to tie the knot in that moment. You think about what's important to you and they proposed. And so we went with it. I would just be. I would I would just be beside myself even afterwards because I, I don't think I would be able to get the gun out of my head. Um, also, I, I want to give a little bit of grace and maybe for a split second see this from the guy's perspective because maybe what's happened is that he is so scared of having a boring proposal story. That this guy's like, what can I do? Because look, I'm not I'm not coming down on y'all and I'm not coming down on her. But ladies, you do flex with your proposal stories. You do you 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 do get out there and really flex with everything that happened leading up to the thing. If somebody took you to Paris, if somebody had like flowers laid out, we hear every detail. And so as a man now, you're probably sitting there like, what can I do that has never been done for one of her friends? I'm a robber. I'm I'm a I'm gonna rob her. And then when she tells the story, people will be like, so unique, right? Also, if this is how you start your marriage, what are you gonna do at your anniversary? What's the plan here now? You know, are you gonna plan more surprises like this? Like, is it gonna be the anniversary? And then you have somebody call your spouse to be like, Hey, I know this is terrible timing because it's your anniversary, but he's passed. He's not with us anymore. And then you let her plan a whole funeral. And then at the funeral, you run up behind her like, while you're crying, I wanted to do something really sweet for you. And then you renew your vows right there. That seems like something that this guy might do. And I and I want to be clear. I hope they have a happy, beautiful relationship. I'm just trying to give my notes now because I can tell this won't be his only marriage. Like, it, like if this is the idea that he has first, for the first one, I think he's going to have many more relationships after this. I'm just throwing it out there. But let's see what you think about this whole thing. Uh, I couldn't live life knowing they pull stuff like this. Okay, Sarah, I see you. Yeah, it would be this. This is what's so stressful about the whole thing is that they planned the proposal exactly like you would plan a robbery anyway. Do you know what I mean? Like, imagine if Ocean's Eleven happened to just you, but then it was a proposal. So you're like, wow, that's so great that you had all your friends and my family here. And then you 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 took me to the vault of of, of the bank that I work at. And then you you took all you all took off your ski mask and it was you. And then you proposed. And I I work at this bank. So this is my worst nightmare. And I think about this happening every day. But good on you. I'll never forget you know, uh, yes, yes. Once again, Professor Pen Pentharby, that's exactly what I was thinking. How can you say no if he's armed? You know, I don't like I haven't been held at gunpoint multiple times, so I can't on on a on a scale say what I would do per situation. But I will say normally if somebody has a gun, I'm like, you right. You 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 good. 
I agree with the person with the gun while they have the gun. Now, if you put down the gun, now I'm my own person again. I have agency. As soon as you pick the gun back up, you start to look more and more right the more that you talk. Let me see. Okay. Okay, yes, a bright red blinking light spelling out run in Morse code is what Brandon Wirtz says. Now, is that when you get back in the car? Is that you sort of tapping the blinker while they're driving? Or are you like, I'm a drive now, and then you throwing the blinker on? And then let me see. Okay. Victor S. Small Jr. says, how does she surprise him with a pregnancy? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Revenge, you know, love and revenge is is a is a beautiful recipe to keep two people together. You know, you went ahead and had a daylight robbery on me to propose. I'm going to go ahead and have a kidnapping for you for the gender reveal. Right. So he's just walking to work one day. And then those same dudes, maybe they just hire these dudes out their entire relationship those same dudes run up on him put a bag over his head throw him in a van he's like oh please please don't hurt me all right don't hurt me i have a wife and they're like we know we don't care and he's like oh i have a baby on the way and they're like we know we don't care and then they drive up somewhere else they pull him into this warehouse they take the you know the the veil off of his head and they're like surprise it's a boy that feel pretty good right that'd be amazing after You've probably wet yourself. Yes, wedding will be a takeover. Yes, James Chadwick. Blonde 007 said she's doomed. I don't know about that. I mean, it's 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 one occurrence, you know? It's like maybe this is the thing that he did and then they talk about it and and it's fine. I'm not saying that the relationship has to be doomed. I'm just saying if you do stuff like this to begin with, it's not looking bright. All right, and then Black Black Ashkachum? If the hostage room is blue, it's a boy. Pink, it's a girl. That is good, too. That's a good, yes, th they're holding him hostage. He's in the room, and he's looking around, and it's like a, a pink room. And he's like, where have you brought me? And they're like, to, to your future. And then they're like, you know, maybe pop a balloon to just really drive the pink home. And he's like, what? And they're like, you don't get it yet. It's us from the proposal. Remember you hired us to, to fake rob you? Well, we fake kidnapped you. So moving on, I want to I wanna be clear about something. There, there are first responders in, in every country, and these people have an incredibly difficult job, okay? They, they have a job that is, is tense, that is is uh, nerve wracking, where the stakes are high at every turn, right? Like it's not like a job like I have or a job that I've had before, where you clock in and you clock out, and the things that happen outside of when you're there really aren't your problem specifically. If it's not your position to be there, right? But with first responders, it's not like that. They can't help but take their work home. They're human, you know. So when I saw this story. I thought to myself, what what must be going through the mind of someone who is almost like knees bent, arms out, ready for an emergency at any moment? And they hear these type of things. Um, man calls 999 after eating too much kebab. Now, 999 is not 911, but it's like 911 in another country. So just uh, if you are in the States, if you're tuning in from the States and you don't know what 999 is, just imagine I've said 911. But I want to I want to read you a little bit of this because it's it's something that I'm not saying I would do it, but a part of me could see myself getting to a place if I thought I was in a in a bad way. An ambulance service has reminded people to only phone nine 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 in an emergency after revealing its worst offenders for inappropriate calls, including a person who sought help after eating too much kebab. Now we don't know how much kebab he ate. Maybe he did eat a near lethal amount of kebab. I don't know what's in it. I don't know how many of the ingredients you can have before you get real sick. But if he called and he wasn't just calling to be like, my tummy hurt. If he called and he's like, I've done it. You need to come get me. 
I personally think that's kind of an emergency. Among the others who wasted the time of overstretched call handlers were a person who misplaced their false teeth. If it's if if you're at home, yes, don't call. This is not an emergency. If you're out, I'd say maybe still don't call, but it is more of an emergency because you aren't going to be out forever. You're eventually you're going to have to go back home. But if they're just in the house somewhere, I don't really know how a first responder can can help you. Uh, another person who got a ring stuck on their finger. Now, I want to be very clear. If you get a ring stuck on your finger, it is panic inducing. But don't call 911. Okay? Get some butter. All right. Make sure to calm yourself down. Last thing you need is to freak out and 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 break out in hives and get your finger all swollen, make it even harder to get off. Calm down, get some butter. OK, or you could get a little string. Now, if it's if it's very, very snug, this won't work. But if it's to the point where you can wiggle it up and down the knuckle a little bit, you can get a little piece of string and then the string putting it through can help give you more leverage as you try to pull it off. Right. Because you're you're getting a little torque on the knuckle. Everything I said does not sound. Right, but it has worked for me in the past in certain situations tell me by the way in the chat a thing that you know you shouldn't call for but you've wanted to before okay um yeah getting the ring so i guess it is an emergency if you like married if you if you married let's say you got two families right and now you realize you got the wrong ring on for the wrong family. And now you try and get it off. and You can't get it off. That is a personal emergency. Still don't call emergency services for it. But I'm, I'm with you. If you need to get a ring off quickly and another ring on quickly and your finger is just not cooperating, your finger decides to be faithful that day. Your finger's like, no, you a cheater. You go be exposed today. I can see you freaking out. Uh, another person who called is someone who lost their voice. Which is difficult. If somebody calls you with a lost voice, you do just hear breathing on the phone. You're not you're not gonna know what that's that's almost a texting nine one one type thing. Which once again, do not bother them. Your voice will come back unless you have bronchitis. Then you should go to the to the ER. But I've I've lost my voice many times, and you just rest a little bit, drink your fluids. The voice will come back. Don't panic. And another person who got their hand stuck in a letterbox. When I read this, I was like, this one's an emergency. If your hand is actually stuck in the letterbox that you can't leave and all you have on you is your phone to call for help, I feel like that's fair. That that one seems about right to me. Um, Welsh Ambulance Service published some of the transcripts of conversations call handlers had with people who made inappropriate calls to the service. These are in quotes. Tell me exactly what's happened, a worker said to the person who called about eating too much kebab. Yesterday evening, the caller replied, we had some kebab, and I may have had a little bit more than I'm used to. Then this morning, I've had a very painful stomach. This is when it is important to be specific. Because that doesn't sound like an emergency right there, but I'm trying to put myself in the mind of the person calling, right? And if you say very painful, painful stomach, that's, that's far too vague. If you're like, it feels like a groundhog is trying to get out of me. Now I'm listening. Now I'm like, okay, this is bad. Maybe we should check in on this man. Let me know in the chat things that you may call for that you know that you shouldn't. Let me see. Handcuff keys broke at home. Okay, Ethan, I see you. That's you. You a freak. All right. A uh, petty neighbor dispute, but hey, they take me anyway. Okay, I, maybe I don't, maybe I didn't catch what that one was about. Uh, with a lost voice, call a doctor. Yeah, you can call the doctor. You might be like, hey, I feel fine and my voice is gone. Yeah, please, yeah. I'm not saying don't call anybody. Uh, call 911 because there was a SWAT on my porch and a bunch of them throwing explosive across the street. Wow. This is, this one is, yeah, you, you probably should have called 911. This, this is not really what I'm, what I'm talking about. 911 lady says, nothing's wrong, but I can't tell you what's going on. So they were just at the wrong house, and it was your house. 
is what it sounds like. I wanted to call 911 when I got stuck on the F train last week. They're doing all the track work during the day when I travel. That's from the Mast One studio, and I've been there. I've been there. I've been on the F train where, yes, it stopped because they were doing some work on it in a way that felt like maybe they, you know how when you're a kid and you don't do all your homework the night before, so you try to do it real quick? That's what it felt like, but for track work. Because it was, because in my head, I was like, am I crazy or is everyone trying to go somewhere right now? Like, you know, I, I understand it's like you want, you want everybody to have a work-life balance and everything. So just working from 3 a.m. To, to, to 6 a.m. is not truly conducive with like getting work done or the, the schedule of the, of the people working on the track. But it does seem like a better time than 10 a.m. Like everybody's trying to get to work still. You know, and especially the people that are late that were supposed to be there at nine. Okay, let's see. Um, let's see. Hmm, that may that may be it as far as as far as some nine one one calls that you feel or that you feel like you shouldn't have called for. Those are the ones that really stuck out to me. Some other things are coming in the chat. You can keep at you can very much keep uh, adding as well. I'm I'm not going to stop looking, but I'm going to move on to the next story. Um, uh, let me see. Thank you so much for the for the shout out, uh, uh, Brazil senior. Oh, okay. Wait, Trina also said I called nine one one for a strange smell. All right. But is the strange smell explosive? You may have been doing everybody a service. Don't count yourself out. All right. Moving on real quick. A French post office has uh, opened changing rooms for online shoppers. Now, this is one of those things that seems small. It seems subtle, right? Who cares, you might say. But I think that that it it's it's pretty poignant all right a lot of us use amazon and and some other online shopping and when the thing comes in we pick it up from the post office we take it home we try it on maybe it doesn't fit maybe it doesn't fit how you like maybe it just doesn't look great on you it doesn't look like the picture and it's time to return it now you have to grab the return label you got to put it back in you got to hope that you didn't ruin the box too much or you got to get a new box and then you have to ship it back and then you have to wait for your for your refund for as long as it took you to go home and try it on. Sometimes you don't have time to try it on same day, return it same day, you know? So now you've turned what could have been very quick into like a week long process. And this French post office opened a changing room for online shoppers. So that way you could get it. You could go to the changing room immediately. You could try it on. And if it fits, you can take it home. You could even wear it out or if it doesn't fit, doesn't look good, you don't like it, you can pop it right back in the box. You can use the return label. You can get it all done in probably 10 minutes as opposed to a full week, right? And this is one of those things where, you know, I know that uh, a lot of people come down on uh, America for different reasons, but I think that this is a great example of how some countries, you know, they have their problems, but they get things together in a way that is that is that is functional enough that they can start to work on the little stuff. I think sometimes in America we work on the little stuff first as if that's the biggest deal and then we move on to the bigger issue. Then we still don't necessarily fix it. Like in, you know, in in America we will argue about anything. We'll be like, "I don't even know if everybody deserves clean drinking water." Someone will say that with a straight face, right? And in countries in Europe like this, they're so far removed from just taking care of social safety nets that they're like, is your post office experience pleasant? Is there anything that we can do for you at the post office that you rarely come to? And I think that that's a great, that to me is a great signal of where a society can go. Now, I'm not saying France is some, is some like uh, haven or some utopia. They have their problems. But I don't know. It does seem like they're taking care of a lot, you know? 
Maybe someone from France who's in the chat can tell me if I'm wrong. Maybe they're taking care of the little stuff first and leaving the big stuff. But it doesn't seem like it. It seems like, you know, you can retire and have a, have a future. It seems like things are good there. Uh, I don't know, you know, as, as much as I'm blowing up, um, you know, America's spot right now, as much as I'm applauding France, I'll be honest with you. I don't know if this could work in the U.S., uh, mainly because, at least in my experience, our our postal workers are far too honest. They're 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 far too. The amount of times I've gone to the post office, not to pick up clothes, by the way, to pick up a package and a postal worker has just told me what I look like. Unprovoked. I don't think I would I don't think my spirit could handle it if I went to the changing room at the post office in America and walked out in like a in like a, a suit jacket. And they were just ready. They were ready to give me their feedback. I don't know if I could handle it. I'm not saying it's not a good idea. I'm not saying that we shouldn't adopt it here, but it would it would break me because they have been spot on about me in the past. Let me know in the chat if you want this instituted in the place that you live do you think that this is a good idea do you think it's a waste of time it seems very much like just um, a metal pole with a curtain covering a nook so it doesn't seem like they broke the bank to get us there um let's see um okay cat does things said france just gave y'all a communal place to exchange bed bugs that that's a good point that's a good it only takes one nasty person to to ruin it for everybody. One one bed bug can can uh can change the world. Let's see. All right. Chill, my dad was a mailman. He wouldn't roast you like that, fam. I appreciate it. Look, look, oversimplified productions. I appreciate that. But not everyone is like your dad, okay? I'm speaking from experience. And I've I've lived in multiple places. I've lived in Louisiana, I've lived in Chicago, I live in New York now, and I've managed to find the right one at every post office I've been to. I won't even by the way, it's not like I'm it's not like I'm taking suggestions and it's not like I'm being out here crazy or anything. You know, it'll just it'll just something will happen and they'll tell me what I either what I look like as a person or what I look like trying to hold all the packages or something. It's and and they're not wrong, by the way. I never take offense because it's not like they're, you know, just picking on me. It's just one time when I was in Louisiana, still living there, I came in and I had to mail like five packages at once. And so I was trying to carry them. And uh and I had it to where my arms were open. I was basically trying to hold the biggest one at the lowest point and stack everything on top of it. But because all the other packages were like oblong, it wasn't working like that. Like I was trying to make the big box, the plate and have everything else on it. And that wasn't working. And so it was kind of falling. So I'm like juggling with it as I'm, uh, as I'm like walking in, someone was nice enough to hold the door before me. And as I get to the front desk, uh, the, the woman behind the desk is like, look at, look at you, look at you fighting those boxes like Stuart Little and I was like that's that's why and like it's, it was just her and I there at that point so it wasn't like even even if I wanted to be a snitch there was nobody to tell I was just like wow okay I'm just trying to use the mail okay someone said uh wait Sunflower has said I wouldn't want it where I live because I'm from Florida Floridians would do some weird things in there okay all right hold out some hope though yeah, okay. James Chadwick said just try it at any post office. Say Josh said it's okay. Yeah, that don't do that. That's don't don't just change clothes at the post office because that will lead back to me in a negative way. Okay, Las Vegas has an outbreak of bed bugs right now. Blonde 007 says and I would say then let's not start in Vegas. You know, Vegas might have to go last. Moving on to the next story. Um, I'm gonna, I'm actually, I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip to uh, Indian police clear a suspected Chinese spy pigeon after eight months in Burt lockup. 
so when this when when I when I read this story, I had a lot of feelings. Um, one, I know that you held the bird for eight months, but how do you know the bird is not a spy? Maybe the bird is just is just good. Maybe they're committed to the cause. You know what I mean? Maybe this bird is like, you can't break me. And unless you speak bird, you wouldn't hear them say that. Also, how are you interrogating the bird? Like, are you, I don't know of a good or bad way to interrogate a bird because I don't know why they do anything they do. I don't even know. You know how sometimes you'll be standing. I mean, maybe everybody here doesn't live in New York, but this happens in New York a lot. You'll be standing next to a pigeon. And even though it should be, rattled they're very like you know dotty scared creatures and and because the bird should be rattled you think it would fly away as soon as you got too close but some birds are like nah i'm gonna take up space i'm chilling if you want to chill next to me that's up to you and then there are birds that you just look at them and they take off and i don't know why that is and i i i can't i don't know bird psychology i have no no understanding of bird theory at all. So I don't know how you would figure out if this Chinese spy pigeon was a spy pigeon. But I also don't want to keep these pigeons in captivity forever. I don't want like a Guantanamo of pigeons that are just there in perpetuity because we don't know. Um, But it does feel like the interrogators might be pretty bad. What I would love to see is like a a usual suspects type pigeon. Like the pigeon is there in interrogation and it's trying to act like it only knows how to fly with his left wing and everything. And then they finally let him out. And he he takes off kind of like, you know, kind of like flying side to side and everything. I couldn't possibly be a spy. Look at how bad I am at flying. And then out of nowhere, he just flies straight. And you're like, oh, maybe. Maybe he was a spy. I want to wrap things up with maybe my favorite story out of all the ones that I read to bring to you today. Raccoons raccoons ruin woman's Taco Tuesday by stealing her DoorDash taco delivery. Now, when when I read this, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, To be fair, we should have to start doing something for our food. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you order food with your thumbs and then somebody brings the food to you and you still don't get up in time to get to the food before the raccoon gets it, maybe you didn't deserve it. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and say it, all right? Maybe, maybe. The raccoon wanted it more than you. Because let's let's be clear. Your domain is your home. It was stolen outside. That's raccoon territory. You know, especially if you live around raccoons. Okay? So I'm I'm just throwing it out there. Maybe, maybe if if we don't hunt anymore, if we don't gather anymore, maybe our job is to stay vil- vig- vigilant. Should have picked a different word. Took me way too long to say it. Maybe our job is to stay vigilant, you know, be ready at the door when the door dasher says they're there, when the seamless driver says they're there, when the Uber Eats driver says they're there, be there. So stuff like this doesn't happen because the story could be worse. The raccoons could have stolen her food inside her home. That's a battle. That That's terrifying. Imagine if you got your whole plate ready to go and you about to eat and you're like, oh, I should wash my hands first. And then you get up to wash your hands. And when you come back, there's just three raccoons squaring up. Ready to take your spaghetti. Nobody wants that. Also, count your blessings, because if you live in a place with raccoons, I'm surprised you can order food. That's a blessing right there. If you live in a place with raccoons. And food delivery and and some some tasty ethnic food. Count your blessings. All right. Let me know in the chat what you would do if a raccoon rolled up on your place and tried to snatch your food right up off you. Let's see. 
Yes. Okay. Renee is with me. Ra- grab the food right away. Yes. Cameron says raccoons keep it real. It feels like a lot of y'all are, you know, on my side. Book nerd for music says, why are you filming? Take your food and run. Yes, because you have raccoons camped out. Once you feed a raccoon or a raccoon gets fed in your vicinity, they remember that. They're like elephants for food. You know, so if the raccoon knows, hey, that magic portal is how you get free food. I'm going to just chill there all day. Yeah, okay. Uh, Michelle says, never approach a raccoon with a sandwich. It sounds like sound advice, but advice you shouldn't have to give. But the fact that you typed it makes me feel like someone has done it. Uh, Tandra says, raccoon is in the hallway. Like, you might as well let me finish that off. I got a buddy in the back. That's true. AJ Music says... Wow, wow, chat's coming in so fast. The raccoons can have it. Okay. All right. Now, I'll I'll even pitch you this. If you know this many raccoons live around you, all right, maybe you do go out. I know that you Uber Eats and and you're seamless when you're not feeling like it, or maybe you're stressed, or maybe you just want a night in. But if this many raccoons are staying ready around you, I think maybe it's time for you, you to leave. Maybe you dip out real quick. So I want to say thank you so much for tuning into Good News. I have dates. I have dates that I'm going to be on the road, and you can find them on my website, Josh Johnson Comedy. I'm going to be in Birmingham this weekend, uh, March 1st through the 3rd, and I am going to be in Albany towards the end of March. Um, Grand Rapids and Stanford are sold out, but don't worry. I plan on going to Stanford again if you weren't able to get tickets, so join the wait list. Uh, join the wait list for any city that you see that you want me to come to, and we will let you know immediately when tickets are available. And I do want to end um, – it, it, I know it changes the mood and it changes up the the, the purpose of doing good news, but I, I do want to – to say that we will very much miss uh, Richard Lewis. Uh, he passed away, and an incredible actor, incredible comic, um, a part of comedy history, and someone who I think is always going to have his mark on the entire form of comedy. Um, you know, if if you can, let anyone know, any any comedian that you enjoy, let them know that you enjoy them. I, I have the pleasure of knowing and working with so many funny people, and I try to do my best to tell them that I think that they're great, not just as people, but I think that they're funny people every time I see them because I think it's important. It's very important that every person knows how much they are loved, what they mean to the people around them, and what they mean to the people that they entertain. So if there's anyone you like, and it doesn't even have to be comedy, if there's anyone you like, a musician, an artist, if there's anyone that you enjoy, DM them, speak to them, let let them know, you know, comment on their stuff, what you know, whatever it is. Let them know that you love what they do because it it truly means a lot. And I hope someone like Richard Lewis knew how much we love and enjoy his work and how much we're gonna treasure his legacy. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. I I'm Josh Johnson and I will be back very soon to give you more good news.